Hi everyone, Justin here. I want to talk to you about something I'm very passionate about, and that's baiting black bear in Maine. Where my stand is. It's way right there. You can't see it, but it's up there. And there's my trail camera. I want to share with you three vitally important rules when establishing a bait site or when continuing a bait site that you've been using for years prior. Three very important rules when baiting are, number one, keep things simple and the same. Don't go switching up things at your bait site every week or every couple days. You're, what you're going to do is to cause nocturnal bear you're going to put those bear on high alert especially those big older mature boars and they're going to be very reluctant to come in in the daylight at all the number one rule is keep things simple and the same now what i mean by that is keep your baiting path the same don't stray all through the woods here and there and everywhere going to and from your bait when baiting every day keep your baiting path the same have that baiting path cleared out of any sticks and branches, leaves, anything that might brush against you as you come and go. Keep that path the same to and from when baiting. And also, on the flip side to that, when actually hunting over your bait site, when ambushing the black bear and waiting them out, have your path to and from your hunting stand or hunting blind the same. Don't stray from that path, but also have it different from the path you use to bait every day. Don't use the same path that you go to and from your bait for baiting every day uh, as you would when hunting the bear. By all means, do not have any food scent or smell anywhere near your sit spot, near your hunting stand and blind. So you're going to have a different path that you take to and from your blind and stand than you would for baiting. The baiting path must stay the same don't stray from it when baiting every day and also what i mean by keep things simple and the same for the number one rule to baiting black bear what i mean by that is don't like switch up buckets and barrels whatever you use to put your food in keep that the same whatever you use for attractant scents or smell whatever you put on the scent wicks or whatever you use for a scent dispenser to disperse scent through the woods as a calling car to call in more bear your bait site keep those scents the same don't don't go overboard with the tractant scents the those odors are extremely strong and can really put bear on high alert now as far as feeding the bear what they're eating you've got to adhere to a bear's nutritional needs and wants and desires so it's okay to have a variety of foods you can have peanuts and granola and chocolates and and uh, candy, p candies and cookies, donuts, pastries, meat, uh, just the list could go on and on. As far as food, things you're going to feed the bear, stuff that the bear can eat to pack on those fat calories before the upcoming winter, before the denning season. They really need to, in the fall, really eat like 5, 000, over almost nearly 10,000 calories a day. They've got to the bear, black bear need to eat like 10 pounds of food a day leading up, you know, in the fall months, leading up to the early winter and denning season. 
So they really require a lot of a lot of protein and calories. So you've got to have a variety of foods, all different types of foods. That's okay. Those can vary in different in ways, but but you're putting that in a baiting barrel or a bucket. You're you're keeping what needs to stay the same here is what where you put the food. Like what base of tree that you lo you pile the food at and the logs and sticks you pile on top of the food, keep that same. The barrel you're using to put the food in, make sure it's the same barrel. Let's say the your barrel's not tied down and a bear rolls your barrel off somewhere hundreds of yards away, somewhere in the forest where you can't find it and you lose your baiting barrel because you didn't chain it down or tie it down to a tree. Then you all of a sudden you're, you're in a dilemma. You, you have no choice but to get a different barrel. But that barrel, the new barrel, is going to have different smells and scents and might look different too to the bear. And that could make the bear a little uneasy and coming in. And that's going to put bear on high alert. So number one rule to baiting black bear. Just keep things simple and the same. Simple in that just use the same baiting path. Use the same. Also, another thing that's very important to keep the same is the gloves you wear. Your baiting gloves. I wear these gloves I call my baiting gloves every time I bait. And those gloves touch the barrel. I use them to pick up the barrel after the bear has knocked it down. So there's naturally this scent and odors from the bear on those gloves. There's food smell on them gloves. I don't want that on my hands. What I'll do is I'll come down my baiting path in the morning. I'll take off, drop my bucket of food and spray bottle with the attractant scent. Put that down. I'll take my gloves off. And then I'll grab a clump of needles and earth and leaves and dirt, whatever, and rub the dirt all over my hands to get rid of any human odor on my fingers. And then I go to my trail camera and switch out SD cards. And then I go back to my bucket, put my baiting gloves back on, then I proceed on to the barrel to pick up the barrel, put the food in. And another thing I keep the same is I bang the bucket three times. One, two, three to get any stuck on food in the bucket out. And then and I also bang the side, the edge of the barrel three times with the bucket. One, two, three. So I'm banging six times total. I keep that the same. I never change the rhythm on that. So I, I'm keeping things simple and the same. And by banging that bucket and that barrel, that's signaling to the bear that there's fresh food there in that barrel. That's like a calling card to them, if you will. Because black bear are extremely intelligent they're so smart in fact that they have the ability to rationalize they can a bear can rationalize to the point where they're reasoning that okay I, i'm i'm coming in every morning to bait i'm doing the same thing every morning and the bear get used to that accustomed to that they're learning from that you're imprinting on them bears minds that all of this means fresh food to them so you've got to keep that in mind so black bear, they they just are that smart, that intelligent enough in that they can decipher, discern. They have the ability to reason and rationalize that all of that, everything you're doing, the hunter, baiting every morning, all the things you do, as long as you're keeping it the same, you're not changing up your patterns in any way. The bear are learning that, that, all, that all that means there's food there and that they're hearing these sounds and they're smelling those smells from that attractant scent you're spraying. And the food that all of it triggers a feeding response in the brains of those bear. And it's all, all everything you do is telling that bear, okay, I, I'm going to eat tonight. And when those hunger pains set in, those bear are super hungry and the hunger drives them into your bait site. They're going to know that there's fresh food there because they heard the banging of the bucket, heard the banging of the barrel. And they heard you departing, heard your truck driving away. And so the bear, they can, they have that ability to just know. Fresh food is there. You see, you got to keep things the same. You got to do everything. Everything you do is a pattern when baiting the black bear. Stick to that pattern. And that's why I keep mentioning keeping it simple. <laughs> Make it easy on yourself. You want it easy for you, the baiter, because you're doing all the work. You're putting in all the effort and time and work to bait them black bear. So keep it simple, but also somewhat the same and keep the same patterns when you're baiting. But the one thing that can vary and differ is the food, what the bear are eating. You gotta imagine, uh, 
Picture yourself eating the same thing day in, day out for a month straight. What's going to happen? Yes, you're going to grow sick of tired of that food. And you may become ill from it, from eating the same thing constantly, day in and day out. The black bear are no different. They're going to grow tired and sick of eating the same thing constantly. So a variety is really good. You've got to cater to the nutritional needs and wants and desires of those bear by having a variety of different foods. So keep that in mind also when baiting black bear. So that was the number one rule of the three rules I'm sharing with you on baiting black bear. And number two, another number two, very important rule when baiting is to always have a reward there for when the bear, when that mature big bear boar comes in to your bait, make darn sure they're getting something to eat, something to remember your bait site by. Have have plenty of food in the barrel and plenty of grease and syrups and frostings. The same foods you've already been using from day one have plenty, have more than ample enough and be putting a lot of that out there. Don't let your bait site dry up and go make sure there's always food in the barrel and there's food in general for those bear when they're coming into your bait. You want that bear to go away feeling full, satisfied, and also remembering your bait. And you want that bear to want to come back in days to come, the following day and two days, three days later, a week later. You want that mature boar to be like, hey, when they get hungry, good and hungry, and the hunger pains are setting in, and, they, and they're getting that trigger, that feeding response, you want that bear to be thinking of your bait and not someone else's or not thinking of any other food source. You want them to come to your bait. So when you're in your stand and waiting it out, hoping for that big mature boar to show, he will if you didn't let him come into a dry bait. Under any circumstances, do not let your bait go dry. Don't let a bear come in to a dry, empty barrel and nothing at all for them to eat. So that that's why I bait every morning. And and some if I can't bait every morning, at least on minimally every other morning. But when I if I bait every other morning or every three mornings, I bring in two full buckets of food. In some cases three. I'll bring in two full buckets of food for the barrel and uh, I'll put more grease and frosting out, peanut butter, whatever it is I'm using at that bait. I'll put ample, ample amount out to accommodate for a sow with cubs, a couple boars, smaller, younger, dry sows, or any other. I'll put out plenty to accommodate a handful of bear for a couple days. But if I'm baiting every day, if I go in every morning, I'll just bring in the one, the half a bucket or a full bucket of food and a bucket of frosting or grease or whatever. That's number two. The number two of very important rule when baiting, don't let your bait run dry number three vitally this is probably the most important rule of all when baiting and that's it, it kind of goes hand in hand with not switching things up at your bait the number three rule is goes hand in hand and work and kind of go coincides with the number one rule and that's not overloading your sight with human scent, with human odor, with human disturbance. Don't over disturb your bait sight with, with random foreign scents and odors. I wear bait gloves. I call my baiting gloves. They're not disposable gloves, but they're gloves that has, that reek of the, the food I'm using. The food, those gloves have the scent of the barrel. They have the bear saliva and bear the scent of the bear on them because I'm using those glove, my gloved hands to pick up and straighten up my barrel, and pick up the plywood and the cinder block that's holding the plywood on top of the barrel. I'm getting the scent of the bear, the food smells, the scent on those gloves. And then I, and what I do is when I leave the bait site, I wipe them on the leaves and, fir and trees and bark. I wipe them down. And then, so I'm not getting contaminated myself. And then I, and I pull the gloves off very carefully and I keep them in the same spot in the truck on the floorboard in the back seat of the truck. I use the same gloves going in. I always am wearing the same boots. For the number three rule, one way you can eliminate spreading too much leave and too much human scent odor 
in the way beginning on the first day, when you first establish your bait site, clear your baiting path. Clear your baiting path of all trees and branches and ferns or anything that might rub against your pants. Clear, I, I clear the path of, of any sticks and branches and anything that might rub against me when I'm going in and out. Way, way in the beginning of when, when I first establish bait sites and when you, when you first establish your bait site, you want to pick your baiting trail. And remember that has to stay separate from the path you take from your truck to your hunting stand and blind. Avoid your hunting spot, your sit spot at all costs. Never go anywhere near your stand or blind. Do not, what under any circumstances, do not have any food scent, food smell anywhere near where you're going to be sitting and ambushing that bait site. And keep that trail, that path separate from your baiting path. Clear your baiting path of all branches and ferns and leaves and and brush or anything that might rub against your legs or brush against your arm when you're coming to and from your truck. So you, that way you're not spreading unwanted human scent in there. You want the black bear to become accustomed to your smell, your sight and sound and smells, but you could still make them uneasy if, if you're like, you know, every day we change our clothes. Humans are putting on different pants, different shirt than what they were wearing the previous day. There's going to be there's going to be new smells and scents on those fresher clothes that that we didn't wear the previous day when we went into bait. So there still could be a foreign odor or scent that could get on that tree or branch that brushed against you when you're walking in. So avoid any tree trunks, branches, brush, ferns or anything that could deposit that you could deposit human odor on. So you're not putting those bear on high alert. And they're going to come accustomed and used to your the smell of your baiting boots, the boots you wear to the bait and the gloves you're wearing. And they're going to come accustomed and used to periodically smelling you, seeing and hearing and smelling you at the bait because you're going in there every morning. Black bear are highly intelligent animals. The black bear is the most intelligent mammal in the main forest. They're very, they have the ability to reason, to rationalize. A, a bear can rationalize that, oh, the sound of the bucket banging against the edge of the barrel signals food. That means that food, there's new food there. Or the sound of that pickup truck driving in, parking, the door shut, slamming, and the hunter pull, and the sounds of the bucket of food coming out of the bed of the truck, and the, the hunter walking down the baiting trail and picking up and adjusting the barrel. The bear, can, they can rationalize all this and they can they can decipher all this and figure all this out that all that disturbance and noise, all those specific sounds mean new food at the bait site. And it, it's all going to be like a dinner bell, bell, if you will, to the bear. All that disturbance is gonna signal to that bear that, oh, there's more food there. I'm, and they're gonna come on in hours later Towards the evening, they're going to saunter on in for a bite to eat. So, And the bear have the ability to reason like this. That's just how smart black bear are. And, and for all intents and purposes, uh, they're so smart that the black bear is going to know that your tree stand is there in that tree. They're going to know that you have a hunting blind hidden 30 yards away in the, in the hemlocks and f ferns and in the thick trees over there. The... The bear, they're going to know where your sit spot is. They, The bear have come into your bait site and studied the whole area. They've circled it and paced it back and forth, smelling everything, seeing everything, hearing everything. The bear are going to know. They really are. They're going to know when you're there for the most part. But the one baiting every day, the hunter baiting a bait site every day, the bear are going to be accustomed and used to that person's scents and sounds and the way they look. And the, the bear, I've always said, the one baiting ha has a higher chance of shooting a bear at that base height because the black bear are used to the hunter. The one they're used to the one going in and out of that bait site every day, and so and. The hunger is going to drive that bear, and the bear will come in, look up, stand, 
see you there. They might see that. You see that random blob, the strange blob in that tree. And for the most part, the bear probably heard the hunter, heard you coming into your stand. And a lot of times they do. Some Sometimes the black bear, they go away full and satisfied from the bait. And they don't go too, sometimes they don't venture too far, just a few hundred yards away to sleep, to lay up and rest for the day before coming back for more to eat. And so a lot of times the bear will hear, can hear a hunter coming into their stand. And they might hear and possibly see the hunter climb in their stand to get up there to perch and wait it out. And so when naturally when the bear comes in in the evening, they're, the bear's going to look right at the hunter. They're going to stare. I've had bear do this every single time that I've hunted a bait site. I've had bear look right at me. Look at me in the blind. Look up at the stand. The bear know that that blind or that stand are there. I've, whenever I've hunted black bear out of a ground blind, I've always had blinds destroyed, like tore down, like caved in, and claw and teeth marks put in the blind. The, they don't always break the poles to the blind. I'm always able to re, to push the hubs out and get that blind back up. But there'll be new, there'll be holes and tears in the blind because the bear found the blind. They know that's there. But I. I've never, ever went anywhere near that blind when baiting. I don't put any food scent or smell in that blind. In my blind, I put up days before I ever start baiting a site. I let the blind kind of get somewhat scent free, get rain on it. I spray it with scent away spray. I let the blind sit out there and let the weather kind of deteriorate any human odor on that blind. And then I stay completely away from the path I take to and from my hunting blind when baiting. But somehow, some way, the bear still find them blinds. Even though they're 30 yards away and hidden, tucked away in the trees, the bear still find them. And the bear still find the stands, stand sites and locations and know that they're there. They just, they just know the bear are just that intelligent, smart. They know. A black bear is going to find a stand in a blind a lot quicker and easier than a white-tailed deer would. So you just got to keep all that in mind. So though there's your three important, vitally important rules when starting a bait site for black bear or when baiting black bear. And they are, again, to keep things simple and the same. Don't change, constantly switch things up, change things up at your bait site. Number two rule when baiting black bear is always make sure the bear or being rewarded when that bear comes into your bait. You want them to get filled, feel full, satisfied, go away, knowing that there's still food left behind. And that's going to signal, that's when that bear gets hungry again, and they want to eat the next day, they're going to come back to your bait, knowing there's still food there. Don't let your bait run dry. Number three rule, very, this is probably the most important rule of them all, and that's to eliminate your human, any types of foreign odors, scents, or human odors that you, that's unnecessary at a bait site. Eliminate all that at all cost. And obviously, when hunting, it's vitally important to be as scent-free as possible. And, and don't let that bear smell you, see you, or hear you when hunting. So there you have it. Three very important rules when baiting black bear. I wish all of you the best of luck this season. I hope you get get that bear that, that you've been after, that you've been hoping for. If you're a new time bear hunter, if you're new at this and you've never shot a black bear, I really hope you shoot your first bear this season. I hope that you learned something here to help you go out there and get your black bear this season. So I wish all of you the best of luck. Uh, please smash that like button for me before you go. If you're not subscribed to my Spikes and Gills YouTube channel yet, won't you please subscribe, click the notification bell so you'll be notified of all future uploads. And I greatly appreciate your support and follow. And please uh, stay tuned for the next one. Definitely subscribe if you're not already. Click the notification bell so you'll know to be notified of when those future uploads come out.